Raise your hands if you heard about the Camino from Martin Sheen, Paolo Coelho, Shelley McLean. They all talk about French Camino. This may be surprising for many people, but there are more than just one Camino. And surprise could be even bigger if I tell you that the Camino, the main Camino, it's not even the original Camino. The first time that we embarked on the Camino experience, we had the dilemma. Which Camino to choose? And maybe the dilemma that you might also have right now. And Eric has chosen the Portuguese way from Porto, and I did a bit more natural, rough Camino del Norte. And since that first step, we did more than 10 Caminos and we've learned many lessons and we have many stories to tell. Are there any regrets? Would we actually start with the same Caminos again? So my first Camino was Camino Portuguese. And uh, at that moment of my life, I was a bit lost. I had a lot of anxiety because I was quitting my job as event manager and I was trying to find my place in the world. I really needed some time to stop, reset and focus on my needs, focus on what I really wanted. And I thought that going for Camino first thing was a really good idea at the time. And I decided to start with Camino Portuguese simply because I loved Portugal. I loved the, I already traveled in the past in Portugal and I love the food, I love the people, I love the nature. So I thought, why not doing it on foot? And I started on, uh, in Porto and walked for 18 days until reaching Santiago. I remember choosing my first Camino was not the academic research. It was more of an emotional impulse that I had that day. I knew there are a few things important for me. One was food and also the amazing views. And Camino del Norte, which was my first choice, promised all of that. And the other important things was that it wasn't as popular as the French Camino and I was looking for something not as popular. This is day number four and I'm in the middle of I don't know where. It's 1552. Oof, this... Camino Santiago is not an easy thing, eh? And it's only the day number four. So it wasn't all roses. The initial days was that difficult. And I understood quite clearly how you shouldn't be prepared for the Camino de Santiago. After the five days, sending back home five kilos already. And now, as we know, there is not only one Camino, we're gonna look into which would be the perfect option for your first Camino from three different perspectives. Time, physical effort, and the purpose. Baby. Hey. Baby. Hey. Talking about time. Time. So that's, that's how it works, that the world is divided into holidays, you know, working part and the holiday part. And people normally have a week of holidays. I need a holiday, a very long holiday. If you have a week of holidays, where can you go on the Camino? Could be any last hundred kilometers from Saria, from the French way, Tui, the Portuguese way, Ferrol, Camino Inglés. Mm -hmm. Or could be any other hundred kilometers of any other Camino, which is five, six days close to Santiago, right? The pros are, are obvious, you know, because lots of facilities, coffee shops, accommodation, hotels, and lovely, charming Galician little villages, right? And food. And food. Oh, well, food is everywhere. <laughs> and the cons are that there are plenty of people on the road, there are plenty of people on the Camino. Because plenty of people have only one week. And what happened if you have two weeks of holidays because you decided not to go and see your family this year? You can start from Porto, Camino Portuguese from Porto. You can start um, from Astorga for the Camino Frances, uh, Zamora for the um, Camino San Abres. You can also start in Ponferrada, Camino del Invierno, or Oviedo in a primitive way. Few options there, right? Yeah. And the pros of, of making the longer Caminos or investing more time into the Camino are obvious. Obvi Not so obvious. Obvious for us. Yeah. Because Camino is like an onion. 
right? Camino is like an, the book that you open and only in the end you understand ah, the, the, message, the yeah. message. And the same happens with the Camino. You have to start to walk and walk and walk and through another page, another onions layer, another uh, another sweat and tears, another blister, you actually get to some pretty deep understandings. But there are those blessed ones, retired, or simply those ones who don't have to work or don't have a family that they have to go and see all the time. Me? Retire? Right. Or they are traveling with the family. Or they travel with the family. So if you have unlimited amount of time, where would you go? I would do Camino Mozárabe, Día de la Plata, Camino Francés, Camino del Norte, <laughs> any 800 plus kilometers. I think it, it was a great choice to do it as a first Camino. It gave me a hint of what Camino could be and it wasn't challenging. It was the right dose of everything. I had silence, I had introspection. I had good food, I had great people, um, amazing nature and landscapes. I would do it. I would do it again as a first time. And the second reason that helps us a lot to craft any first time Camino, doesn't matter if it's Spain, Portugal, India or Japan, is the reason, right? Why? Am I looking for solitude or parties? Am I looking for a meditation or rather from bonfire and singing around the bonfire, right? Or silence and chatting non-stop with other people. If I'm looking for something more introspective, if for me the Camino is rather inner journey rather than the being there with people, I would go for the lesser known routes. Okay, obviously, this would be Via de la Plata, Camino Olvidado, the Camino del Invierno, okay, and those ones that you don't really hear on in, in any news, like on the first page. In other words, going far away from Camino Portuguese and the French way, because everyone is there. But if I would decide to get to those Caminos, because for many reasons, right, my friends sí. could go there, or maybe there is something that I will particularly want to see over there, it doesn't disqualify me from experiencing the silence and meditation. There was one person who said once from our community, it's not the Camino you choose, it's about your attitude. So if you're looking for solitude, even if you are in French Camino, you can have your solitude time. And there is one item without which Camino de Santiago in its transformational aspect wouldn't be as possible. The journey within Camino de Santiago journal. Number one journal for the Camino de Santiago. After many years of walking, we observed something really interesting. There are many stages on the Camino de Santiago that sometimes require explanation or sometimes need to be enhanced like meseta like the first day like arriving to santiago like finishing and integrating the part of camino into your new you this has a daily devotions this one's for example the self-care explains you how to integrate this aspect into your day-to-day -day life and take care of yourself in many different levels on the side, you will find a way to write it down. You can use it before the Camino de Santiago in your pre preparation. And that means intention settings or working about your expectations as well during Camino with the subjects like effort, loneliness or trust. Many pilgrims love it and hopefully you're going to love it too. You can find it in any library all over the world. And you can even have it delivered to your home, your best Camino friend. What I really remember from my Camino was the sense of empowerment that I got because of walking. It doesn't really matter if it's 100, 200, 600, 800 really personal right but the sense of being able to do something especially as i was recovering from the injury of my back it charged me with this good vibe of you own your life and since then many many things changed in my life actually you know that's why we do in this channel because that was the beginning of it all of course i would do it again as a first time and the third important category the cornerstone of how to find your way on the Camino de Santiago 
is the physical preparation. No doubt about that. The moment of being honest, how fit I am and how fit I can get. So give me a few ideas. If, if I'm not fit, where can I go? You can do any last 100 kilometers. Mm. Saria, Tui, Inglés. No preparation for that? If you walk before, it could be good, but it's quite manageable. So now I'm a bit more prepared, okay? I've walked before, I maybe walk two or three times a week. Sometimes I do a hike in the mountain. What can I do? Francis from Astorga. Two weeks. Yes. Mm. Portuguese from Porto. Mm -hmm. So from all the Caminos, we have those ones which are a bit more easy. All the last hundred kilometers of every. And also the Portuguese. Portuguese is barely easy, okay? Many first timers go for Portuguese because it is easy. Yeah. If you want to taste the water, that's the good one to start with. French Camino, difficult or not? It has some difficult stretches. It does. It Pyrenees, there are there, a few other mountains, Osebrero Mountains. It's not the fairy tale, right? No. What about Camino del Norte? It's hard. It's harder. It's hard. The most difficult ones, we all know them. The more than a thousand kilometers, Via de la Plata, Via de la Rana, Camino Mozarabe. And if you're still not sure which Camino to choose, join our pre Camino support program, which together with our like minded community, we're preparing for the Camino de Santiago. Head to the description, there is a link. Join and meet the community and make your Camino unforgettable. Those three categories can help everyone to make a good decisions of the Camino, but it's not all. If you want to clarify other doubts about Camino de Santiago, I think you should watch this video just here.